if I put, let's call it 50 real estate professionals in a room and I ask them, what are the top 10 things you need to do in order to succeed? I have no doubt that every single one of those 50 real estate professionals would give me a list, a very clear list. Like they know what they're supposed to do. They're just not doing it. The question is why? It's not about what's happening. It's really about how we think about what's happening. Is this something to be frightened of? Or is this something to say, okay, I need to accept the change. It's here. No denying it. What do I do with it? What up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And I want to start off by acknowledging our new sponsors, Vulcan 7 Listen, when I was selling, these are the guys I used for years and years. Amazing data. You have access to everything you need, the CRM, the FISBO leads, the expired, the old expired, neighborhood data if you want it. There's a built-in calendar, everything you need to be successful. And right now they're doing a special for our listeners. You can try out their service for $49 for two weeks. Try it out. If you love it, great. You stick with it. If you don't, then you you move on and <laughs> you actually get to keep all the data that you've already downloaded. So how do you lose out on that deal? All right. Anyway, if you're interested, check that out. Go to Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. Again, Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. All right. We have a special episode for you today, my friends. Episode number 128, Kim Addis on becoming a top performer with a few, a few shifts in our mindset. And I'll tell you, this is like a literally like a 40 minute coaching call for me. Just awesome. She talks about mindset. Uh, you know, she talks about also business and how our mindset ultimately affects our performance and our ability to actually build that business the right way. Ask us about the limitations in our thinking. I don't know about you. I know I've certainly have, have some limitations I'm always dealing with. And it's just a great conversation on being a top performer. And some of the questions that she asked, that's why I say it's a great coaching call, is really going to make you think at that deeper level. One thing she says, change is not about what's happening. It's really more about what we think about what's happening. And every outcome in life affects our thinking. So excellent episode with Kim. You're going to get a lot from it. And I really hope you enjoy the episode. Again, please check out Vulcan 7, our sponsors, vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. Enjoy, Kim. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we have a special treat. We have frame of mind coaching expert, Kim Addis. Thanks for joining us, Kim. I am so excited to be talking to you today. Absolutely. It's exciting to have you. Let me tell our listeners a little bit about you, and then you can fill in some gaps. You are the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching and Journal Engine Software. You're an author, speaker, entrepreneur, coach, and mother of five. Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. Kim is recognized as one of North America's foremost experts on performance through mastery using her unique philosophy and quirky coaching style. Kim helps her clients shift their thinking in order to yield extraordinary results and personal transformation. So Kim, frame of mind coaching, what, what's that all about? So actually, I don't know if you're aware, but my history was in the real estate industry. I had a company and we used to build simulation-based assessments. One of those assessments was called the Real Estate Simulator. And the purpose of that assessment was to help brokers with their recruiting, selection, and training. We built this product that allowed potential real estate agents to figure out whether or not real estate is a good career for them. So they would go into the simulator and interact with virtual clients who are interested in buying or selling property. And every time they made an action or took an action, their actions would be tracked and then compared with top performers. And we would be able to establish based on their actions, whether or not they were really highly suitable for the career or not. Hmm. If they were highly suitable, then the broker would bring in this potential real estate agent and see if they could work together. And so that's my history. And what I learned as a result of that particular endeavor is what really creates top performers. What's the key difference between top performers and everyone else? That led me to building this coaching company that said, okay, all other coaching companies focus on 
helping people reach their goals by holding them accountable, by helping them create a business plan. But that's not really actually the key to top performance. Let me create a coaching company that focuses on those key elements that helps individuals truly be top performers. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and I honestly did not know that. And thanks for sharing that. I know we over uh, here have some different assessments we use to kind of I'm guessing it's similar, but I, I love the simulations because that's like ro- what, like role play? Yeah, it's exactly role playing. That's exactly it. That's really neat. You know, imagine your door knocking, right? And you knock on the door and a person opens the door and they say, I'm not interested and they shut the door on you. How do you react? How do you get back in? How do you have that conversation? You may just have to turn around and walk away, right? I mean, sometimes it's just simply a, a mindset game, right? Like, okay, that person, I can't help them. So who's next, right? It's not sometimes a mindset game. It's always a mindset game. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. That's a good, <laughs> great point. Some crazy agents may even knock on the door again and, and you know, who knows, right? So right. going to your point, you said it's not just creating a business plan and So what are some of the things that make these agents successful? So here was my thinking, right? Like, so if I put, let's call it 50 real estate professionals in a room and I ask them, what are the top 10 things you need to do in order to succeed? I have no doubt that every single one of those 50 real estate professionals would give me a list, a very clear list. Like they know what they're supposed to do. They're just not doing it. The question is why? Yeah. Right. And so when we look at that question and we look at what does the industry offer by and large, it's training and how to do what they need to do. It's the doing component. Mm. What stops them from getting it done is their thinking, is their beliefs, is something is getting in the way. And that's where frame of mind coaching comes into play. What is really getting in the way? And it may have to do with their confidence. It may have to do with their belief that they're bothering people. It may have to do with their feeling that they don't have enough experience. It may have to do with their feeling that there's a lot of competition out there. It may have to do with they don't feel like the words are coming out of their mouth smoothly. It may feel like they're intimidating, like they don't like rejection, on and on and on. All those things. Yeah. All those things that are secondary to the doing. So you can have the best laid out plan. But if a person's thinking or their beliefs don't go along with the plan, they're not taking action. Yeah. So, you know, going back to what you said, so just use the door knocking example, someone knocks on the door, the person says, don't ever knock on my door again, I don't want anything to do with realtors and slams the door in your face. To me now, that's a confidence thing. So either this person can say, well, geez, that person, they certainly need some help and they can smile and go to the next door or they're going to say, oh my God, I just got crushed and they're going to get in their car and then go to the coffee shop. Right. So lots of different options, right? A person can have that experience and say, I'm not cut out for this. A person can have that experience and say, okay, like that's just one guy. I got to move on to the next. And yet another person will say, hold on before you shut the door. Hmm. I know that you were trying to sell your home and I know that it didn't work. I can help you. So let's say what happens, the guy slams the door. Like, cause I, I built my business on expires and fizzbos when I was selling. Right. And people would hang up on me and I'd literally call back and say, geez, I think we got disconnected. And, and sometimes right. that would lead me into a conversation with them. Sometimes it wouldn't, it would maybe 50, 50 some, you know, but the reality was I wasn't taking it personal cause they didn't know me. So how would somebody handle that situation? Exactly. Well, what you're describing, calling back and saying, geez, I think we just got disconnected is a very distinct trait that differentiates you from everyone else. And that's called emotional resilience. When you get knocked down, it doesn't phase you. It doesn't bother you. That is the distinguishing factor between top performers and everyone else. When we look at what's available out there in terms of training and development for real estate professionals, We talk about scripts, we talk about your circle of influence, we talk about working the plan, but we don't really help people truly build their emotional resilience. That's the key differentiator. Okay, so I, I love your point. And I've been selling for 30 years, right? I started on the phones at 17. I was selling Kirby vacuum cleaners, right? So I I'm used to that. Yeah. But think about the new person that is not used to that. Like, here's a perfect example. In the last couple of weeks, we've been doing lead generation together. I'll go and I'll lead generate with a bunch of agents. We got a couple of new agents come in. 
the lady showed up and she made calls all day for literally like a full week and she didn't get anything. And now she's, she disappeared. And, and my feeling is like, you just put in a whole week and you're getting better every day. And probably right before you're going to have some type of a breakthrough, she, she's gone. She disappeared. So here's the thing. As a broker, your job isn't only to teach people how to make those phone calls. Your job is to understand the emotional aspect, the feeling, the thinking, the beliefs, to catch them before they walk out the door, to teach them to say, here's what you should expect. Yeah. And so to say, here's how you handle it when someone hangs up the phone on you. Here's the mental processing that you need to encounter. So I'll give you an example. And I remember this from years ago in my real estate simulator days. I was very good friends with a gentleman who was a trainer. He trained real estate agents. So hold on. Before, is, is this like a machine or something you're going into or what? The simulator thing. I mean, this sounds really cool. Is this something It's that- not a machine. It's not a machine. It's like an online experience. Uh, okay. And so you literally, you play the role of a real estate agent and someone in front of you on the screen in a video starts talking to you. And then- once they talk to you, get a choice of how to respond. Okay, so this, so we do the same thing now. I think we, it's just we do it as role play. Like every morning, agents are going to call another agent and just say, okay, you're an expired. I'm calling you now. Right. But this is a little different because it's an assessment, right? In your case, you're role playing so that people get better at their skills. This is more of an assessment to see what is it that you do? What are your natural tendencies? And do those natural tendencies, does your wiring set you up for a great career success in real estate? Or really, this is not for you. That's more what it's about. So I want to get my hands on this. I just wanted to share with you a quick story. I had a friend who was a trainer. You know, he would call Fizbo's too, and he'd get on the phone. And if he got a rejection before he hung up or before they hung up, he'd say, thanks, I just made five bucks. Mm. And the person on the other end of the phone would say, I don't understand. What do you mean? He said, well, like, let's do the math. If I make 100 phone calls and, you know, I get no, 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 every phone call I make brings me closer to a sale. And then I make the sale. And so if you divide it by all the phone calls, every phone call gives me five bucks. So he'd hang up and go five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. Every phone call was five bucks. He was earning that in his pocket, regardless of what the person on the other phone said. Now that's a mindset. That's a perspective. That's an attitude. Yep. That's a way of looking at things. And that is the distinct difference between super high performers and other people. I agree. I think it's a great strategy. I've heard that before. Going deeper, though, I feel like it's easy to say that and have that philosophy. But think about the person I referred to that did a whole week of calling. And then, you know, she knew that. She knew it might take 100 contacts before she got an appointment, but yet still just said, you know what, this doesn't work. Right. So there's something in there that says, I'm not cut out for this. Mm. This is not for me. This is too hard. And that's the part that has people dropping out prematurely, that piece. And so when you think about coaching, that's the piece that needs to be coached. So how do you coach that? When we coach people, we ask them to do a couple of things. So usually we coach people initially for a six-month period, and that six months is broken down into two parts, the first 10 weeks and the rest. But let's just focus on the first 10 weeks for a moment. There's a call once a week. It's an hour long, and we record every call. And we insist that our clients listen to the recording before the next call. Why? Because when you start to listen to yourself, you start to pay attention to those stories you tell. The stories that sound like, I'm not cut out for this. This is too hard. I don't know how other people do it, but I don't have it in me. Those are stories we tell. Mm. And we start to help them become observers of this critical relationship between their thinking and their outcomes. Because let me assure you, every single outcome you have in your life is a reflection of your thinking period. Agreed. 100%. If you're not happy with the results, take a look at your thinking. So we help them start to become masterful observers of their own thinking. The second thing we do is we ask them to journal in an online journal every single day for those 10 weeks. And every time they journal, their journal goes back to their coach who then reads and responds to the journal. So they're in touch with their coach every day. So you have this woman who's sitting in a room for a week and she's isolated. She's not talking to anybody. She's not reporting. Nobody's fortifying her. Nobody's saying, hey, like here's what's going on and what do you think is going on? Do you think you're really 
not cut out for it. Nobody's challenging her to say, hey, you have it in you. Stick it out. Nobody's there. Yeah, well, I love that. I'm a huge fan of journaling. Uh, This morning, actually, I spent most of my time reading through some old journal entries, which was fantastic, you know? Isn't it amazing just to see how much maybe you've changed? Yeah, without question. And then you hit a journal, uh, an entry, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe... You like it brings you back to something like, wow, I kind of completely forgot all about that. But look what I've done since then. You know, it was, it was just amazing. Going back to the conversation using the uh, simulator tool, is that still something that exists or how do people get their hands on that? I sold it about 15 years ago. I'm pretty sure it's still in the market though. Okay. I, I'd love to see something like that because I, I feel like if we had that, I mean, because a lot of people, you frankly, get their real estate licenses. The the barrier of entry is is not expensive. It's not that high. Right. And we see shows like HGTV and Million Dollar Listing, and everybody thinks it's super easy, and, and, and you're going to make a ton of money overnight. It's a lot more than that. Of course. So if we were bringing people through this simulation, I'm guessing there probably would be less people actually getting into the business. Well, interestingly enough, and this is a bit of maybe it won't be a surprise, when we built the product initially, we thought, you know what, brokers are making poor hiring decisions. When we brought it to brokers, they said, wow, this is really cool, but we don't want to screen anybody out. We want a way to increase our recruiting efforts. We want more people in. We don't believe that anything can really tell if someone's going to succeed or not. And we said, okay, fine, use it as a recruiting tool. And then use it as a tool that will help you really identify where someone needs help. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And let's help them. Let's leverage their strengths. Let's help them create a plan that leverages their strengths as opposed to trying to help them fix their weaknesses. So essentially, you're, you're figuring out, well, this person, based on the way they operate, may be better at you know opening doors for buyers than they're going to be prospecting for sale by owners, right? Exactly. Or maybe they're really great at building rapport and opening doors and they're terrible at closing. And maybe they need to be in a partnership. Masters, we're going to get you right back to the show. Check out my sponsors, Vulcan 7. Listen, two weeks, try out the services. If you love it, great. Stay with them. If you don't, you get to keep their data that they just gave you for the last two weeks. Can't go wrong. Check them out. Everything you need from expireds, for sale by owners, a built-in dialer, a calendar for setting up your follow-up appointments, a CRM. Everything is there that you need to be super successful with Fizzbowls and Inspireds. Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. Get to try it out for two weeks for only $49. Okay. Also, if you love podcasts, which obviously you do, you're going to love Audible. Okay. Audible is the world's largest selection of audiobooks. So you can get yourself a free audiobook on Audible by going to davidsfreebook.com. Again, davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free audiobook. I would recommend today David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. Unbelievable. Okay, guys, I'm trying so hard to get him on my podcast right now. By the way, if you have any connections, please let me know. I'm in touch with his people. They said possibly we're going to have him on in the fall, so I'm working on that amazing book. And then finally, when you get set up with Vulcan 7, you have access to the leads. I'm working with the Hergen Rother Training Organization, and we're putting together a for sale by owner and expired training session starting in June. On June 4th, it's going to be four weeks, four webinar sessions on everything you need for physicals and expired, how to convert scripts, everything you need. Get that information at listnow.us. Again, listnow.us. Check that out. Guys, thank you again for listening. So appreciate you. And if you would follow me on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash path to mastery. All right, I'm going to get you back to the show. Enjoy. All right, I want to shift gears. The podcast is going in a direction now of stay relevant because the technology, I, I'm glad you have real estate experience. Technology is changing real estate. And it, it's happening at a pretty <laughs> fast pace right now, right? You've got a lot of disruptors coming in. You've got a lot of these companies, Zillow, Redfin. Com- There's a lot of them that are trying to get between the agents and their consumers, okay? What are you saying to your clients when it comes to, and this could be any industry, it doesn't have to be, the majority of our listeners are real estate agents, but a lot of other industries as well. What are you telling your clients? How do you stay relevant when technology really is coming and trying to disrupt and, and knock everybody out, or at least get between the clients? 
Yeah, so you're using the word technology. I'm going to replace that word with change. Change is always happening. It's happening every single day. It's always happening. And if you try to resist that, it becomes painful for you. So this thing called technology is happening and it's causing you to face the change that's right in front of you. And so the question is, what is your attitude about that? Do we resist change or do we look at it and say, what do we do with it? How do we leverage it? How do we turn it into an advantage? If this is what's happening technologically, what's the impact of that? What's the impact on the buyer or the seller, the customer? And how do I differentiate myself? Or how do I work with this technology and make it work in my benefit? And so it's not about what's happening. It's really about how we think about what's happening. Hmm. Is this something to be frightened of? Or is this something to say, okay, I need to accept the change. It's here. No denying it. What do I do with it? How do I turn it into an advantage? I want to tell you a very quick story. Many, 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 many years ago when I was first in the real estate industry and I went to NAR, it was the huge conference. We had a booth and we were introducing the real estate simulator. We shipped our booth from Toronto and we shipped it to New Orleans. And guess what? FedEx lost our booth. So we're there. It's our first NAR We really wanted to make a big splash. We had a beautiful booth and it didn't show up. What did we do? Our plans changed. We went to Walgreens. We bought some Bristol board and a couple of markers and we wrote a sign. Here's what the sign said. FedEx lost our booth. Now we're forced to give you 50% off. Everybody wanted to know, what are you giving us 50% off from? There were lineups. Mm. lineups at this booth. So change happens. Ask yourself, how is this an opportunity for me? What do I need to do to leverage this situation? It's about your thinking. It's not about the circumstances at play. It's about how we think about the circumstances that will make the difference between success and defeat. It's a brilliant point. I I agree with you 100%. You know, there's a percentage of, you know, the 80-20 rule, right? 20% are are going to go in with that mindset of, okay, this is an opportunity. There's going to be 80% that are going to be like, oh, God, I'm not not sure what to do here, right? And then there's going to be another percentage within there that aren't even paying attention to what's going on. So what do you say to the 80% that either don't think they need to do anything or, or may not even be aware, I guess, that this is happening right now? Some people don't need to do anything. They need to carry on and put their heads down and keep doing what they're doing. And if they feel that that's leading them to success and they're getting the results they want, carry on. But if they feel frustrated, if they feel annoyed, if they feel disappointed, if they feel like they're losing, well, then now we have to look at it a little bit more closely. So it's the feeling that we're after. If you feel any negative emotion, mad, bad, frustrated, disappointed, annoyed, angry, whatever those feelings are, that's telling you whether or not you have to pay attention. And that's telling you whether or not you're thinking about this in a way that serves you or in a way that actually depletes you. So it's the feeling that we have to pay attention to. Interesting. If you're pissed off at the world, something's off. Okay. So I, I, one of my roles is, uh, you know, obviously we're opening Keller Williams offices and yep. I'm a recruiter and I call a lot of agents that they're not making much money, frankly. They're not doing a ton of business. I know because, you know, we, we see the numbers, uh, but in their mind, oh, everything's fine. Everything's great. How do you get through to those people and let them know, hey, something, there is actually something bigger out there if you choose. And I feel like the reason I'm asking this is because this is something we deal with on a regular basis. It's super common where just like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm, I'm content. I'm happy where I'm at. You know what I mean? Right, you're talking about complacency. Sure. So what you're doing is just saying, I'm really happy you're, you're in a good place. Let me show you what's possible. For example, I live in a home in Toronto. It's a very nice home in a very nice neighborhood, but my car parking spot has enough spots for two cars, right? My driveway has two spots. And for the average homeowner, that's great. But when you have five kids who all have cars, it's not so great, right? It's a challenge and a struggle and a juggle every day. So if someone says, hey, what if I can find you a home very close to where you live in the same awesome neighborhood with more parking spots? I'm like, oh, I never considered that. It's really about addressing the very issue that they were used to, like the pain they were used to, and showing them that that no longer has to be painful. 
I think there's that side. And then I think there's a side that you get figuring out how you can actually help people think bigger. And I think that's maybe an area where I get stuck because I really see like, wow, you know, you, you should see what these guys are doing. And they've been in a business a shorter time than you. And they work, probably work less hours, but people are just close to that a lot of times. Yeah. So your opportunity is to say, well, what if here's what you could achieve? Mm. It's the what if. Would that be interesting to you? What if? Yeah, no, I'm all set. I'm all set. So, and, and again, I guess it just comes down to the next. Sometimes that's the philosophy. Like you said, five bucks. Okay, well, I just earned five bucks, right? Yeah. If they say I'm all set, say, well, thank you for your time. Would it be okay if I um, sent you a picture of what it could look like? Well, I think it's the same conversation with, you know, the agent that makes calls for a week and then decides to stop because they have to want it. They have to want it more than I want it, right? It's the same thing when I'm when I'm calling people. If they don't want it, I can't make them want it, right? But a lot of people just don't even imagine what's possible. Mm. You know, a lot of people don't know what's accessible to them. And you know why they can't? Because their beliefs say, well, this is how it is. It's about how people think. A hundred percent of the time. When they say they're okay, It doesn't mean that they're not okay or that they are okay. What it reflects is a limitation in their thinking. So what you need to do is say, let me tell you a story. I had this agent. He was doing this and this and this at this office with this brand. And he came over and he couldn't even imagine what was possible. And here's what happened. I love that. And we do that. And I listen, I'm I'm preaching to the choir. I mean, I, I want everybody to get it. And it just doesn't work like that. I think that's, you know what I mean? I want every person I call to be like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And yeah, I can't wait to meet with you. And it's just not the way it works. And I hope everybody gets that. It's the same thing when you call calling expires or FISBOs. It's just, you may call 25 of them and then one's interested, right? In your mind, like what right now is the greatest challenge that real estate agents are dealing with? I think the greatest challenge, honestly, like, you know, it's not an external challenge, it's an internal challenge. And it's the internal challenge to have fortitude, internal challenge to keep going, even though things are hard or tough. It's the internal challenge to say, okay, so like, you know, I'm having a bad week or even a bad month. So what does that mean about me? Honestly, and this is not just for the real estate industry. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with a lot of executives. And in each case, the greatest challenge is internal fortitude. It's a personal challenge that they have to confront and deal with. It's not the environment. It's not the competition. It's not the economy. It's not even the market. It's none of that. Okay. So the majority of the people listening to this, I'm going to guess 100%, you know, need to show up every day and do consistent lead generation, right? Yep. But they're struggling. They're not doing it. So how would you approach this challenge? If I were coaching someone who was having trouble doing what they needed to do, I wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to create a system of accountability. So imagine you're a real estate agent, you're struggling to do what you need to do, you hire a coach, and your coach says, okay, like this week, I want you to make 20 calls or 100 calls, whatever the number is, it doesn't really matter. And you say, okay, and you start doing it. And for the first week, okay, you do it. You don't make much progress, maybe a little progress. The second week, maybe you get busy and on and on and on. But you have this system of accountability and then you feel like, hey, it's not really working. And so you felt bad before you got into the coaching situation. Now, how do you feel? Even worse. So it's not about making people do what they need to do. That's secondary. It's making people think what they need to think. In other words, if my thinking isn't aligned with prospecting every day, it doesn't matter. I can force them to do it, but it's not a sustainable deal Mm. until their thinking is completely lined up with the vision of themselves as a super successful real estate professional. Yeah. I have to deal with the thinking first. I have to line up their thinking. I have to help them imagine what that will be like. And I have to help them identify the beliefs that are standing in their way and slowing them down and sabotaging them and move those over. So first the person thinks, then they behave. And oftentimes we just try to modify behavior without adjusting thinking. That doesn't ever work. No, you're right. And I think for some, I've met some really great people throughout and I brought some great people into real estate that you know, aren't great at cold calling, but they're phenomenal real estate agents. They're great at going to Starbucks and 
meeting everybody in Starbucks and their best friends and three months later they're buying houses from them. You know what I mean? So Right. It's not one formula fits all, right? Everybody has a different approach and we want to leverage their strengths. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody's interested in connecting with you, what's the best way to get in touch with you, Kim? Absolute best way to do that is go to frameofmindcoaching.com. On the website is an opportunity for a complimentary coaching call with one of our team members. We have a team of coaches. They are all incredible. Some of them were in real estate, are in real estate still. Have that chance. That call can be a game changer in and of itself. No strings attached. Just have that one complimentary call and see what it's like to have that kind of conversation as opposed to any other type of coaching conversation. I love it. Yeah. I would recommend everybody take advantage of that. And also, I would ask you anything that I should have asked you that maybe I didn't ask you. You know what? We're talking about it. But here's something like I just want to drive home. If you are not happy with the results in your life, whether you're in real estate, whether you're the broker, whether you're a business owner, whether you're in a marriage you're not happy with, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. If you are not happy with any aspect of your life, before you start doing things to make it better, ask yourself this critical question. How am I thinking about this? What are my beliefs? And does my thinking and do my beliefs line up with my desires or goals? So before you take action, pay attention to your thinking because your actions follow your thinking. And if your thinking isn't lined up with your goals, game over. It's not going to work. All right. I think that's a perfect place to wrap it up, my friend. It was uh, it was a pleasure. And I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. I love to uh, have a conversation about real estate again. It was a lot of fun. Masters, if you know me, you know health and nutrition is number one. And that's why I'm an advisor for AdvoCare products. Listen, in my opinion, these are the best products on the planet. Guys, you get what you're supposed to get, right? I use the products for health. I use the products for energy. I use the products for wellness. So we have all the different lines from Spark, you know, starting your day with a great energy shot all the way to pre-workout. It's whatever your goals are, right? It's whatever your goals are. You can check out the products at www.livelongersmarter.com. That's my website. Or reach out to me. I'd love to have a 30-minute or, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30-minute conversation with you just talking about your health and nutrition goals and what I can do to help you achieve those goals. So again, products, energy line, wellness line, whether it's joints, you're getting up there in the age, you just want to keep take care of yourself. Uh, you know, I'll tell you one of the greatest compliments I get is people, uh, you say, wow, I, I, you look amazing. I cannot believe you are the age you are. You know, weight loss. I've helped lots of people, guys, lose weight. Not just lose it, but keep it off with the products. And the the cool thing is I'd say 75% of the people who start with our products, they continue using our products even after they initially tried them, which has been amazing. And strength, if you're into bodybuilding, then hey, you know, Rich Fronin, okay? I don't know if you know who Rich Fronin is. Uh, He's an advocate for uh, for AdvoCare as well. So amazing products. You can see us, we're featured on NASCAR, uh, professional soccer, college basketball, college football, Men's Health Magazine last month. These are the real deal, guys. LiveLongerSmarter.com is the website. Or reach out to me. if you Like I said, if you want to have a personal conversation with me, just send me an email in the subject line. Just put Advocate Products. And I'd love, like I said, schedule a 15 to 30 minute call with you to talk about your health and nutrition goals. Guys, you rock. Live longer, smarter. And as Gary Keller eloquently said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? You rock. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.